Dr. Colin Yappin, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. It's been a great conference. Can you speak a little bit about how you use big data in your work, specifically about your work with uh, ethnic and racial minorities? So I work with electronic health record data, specifically from the Palo Alto Medical Foundation, which is a Sutter Health affiliate locally, as well as Kaiser. And electronic health record data is important because we're able to use uh, the clinical information and additionally leverage that for research. So we're um, getting more bang for our buck, if you will. So we have uh, information like blood pressure and glucose and cholesterol that's already collected for clinical information, which helps doctors take care of patients. And then we can look at that on the back end over millions of people and be able to look at trends over time and look at specific racial ethnic subgroups. So the subgroups that I'm interested in uh, particularly are racial ethnic minorities in the U.S., which by 2050 are going to be over half of the U.S. population. Mm. And uh, focusing in on a group that is a little understudied, Asian American subgroups. So Asian American subgroups are Asian Indian, Chinese, Vietnamese, Korean, Filipino, and Japanese. So those are the six largest Asian subgroups in the U.S. And they make up about 85% of the Asian population in the U.S. Mm. And disaggregating them, because when you put all of these very diverse groups together, you often don't see differences in disease risk among the groups, which are actually quite immense. So for instance, all of these Asian subgroups have higher risk of diabetes than non-Hispanic white populations. And the groups that have the highest risk within those six groups are Asian Indians and Filipinos. But we would never know that if we just looked at a big data set there, that would be lost within the, the, the larger data? The larger aggregated group. Interesting. And it really helps us target prevention efforts. Coronary artery disease is also an excellent example. When you put all the groups together, it doesn't look like there's any increased risk of coronary disease, but when you disaggregate them, it looks again like Asian Indians and Filipinos have higher risk and Chinese have lower risk. But Chinese and East, other East Asian groups have higher risk of cancer. So it really helps us understand differences in disease risk and helps us personalize medicine to each and every patient that we have. This seems especially important because a lot of the research studies that are conducted focus on, you know, Caucasian men. Mm -hmm. And then it's hard to extrapolate clinically. But it sounds like what you're doing is taking data from patients that already exists and then using that to find trends. Absolutely. And um, it's very cost effective because in uh, clinical trials, we have to recruit people and it takes a lot of effort and time in the clinical trial coordinator and in um, trying to track people down over right. time. And this way we can um, get information from a diverse population uh, with very little amounts of money. It's all there. Exactly. And then additionally, there's not a participant burden. So let's say you're a busy young mother. It might be hard for you to find child care for your child right. and come in and participate in research. But this way we're really lowering the time commitment that it takes for people to participate in research because they're just getting their health care and then we can additionally use that information for greater good. So a lot of this comes from, as you mentioned, the electronic health record. Mm -hmm. Now this is something that's in the scope of the history of medicine fairly recent. Mm -hmm. So has the capacity for this type of research just exploded? It has, and what we really have to focus on is increasing the signal to noise ratio. Can you explain that a little bit? So we have a lot of noise in electronic health record data because there are so many bits of data that it's hard to find the things that are very important. One thing that I have found in my 15 years of working with electronic health record data is that we often, as physicians, have lots of variation in how we provide care. Mm -hmm. So it's not cookie cutter. So each physician does things in a slightly different way. Right. So when we look at electronic health record data and we, for instance, know that uh, to diagnose diabetes, we need to have certain lab values. But we find a lot of the times that um, there's not a one-to-one -one correlation or 100% overlap of the abnormal lab values and the physician diagnosis. Sometimes the physicians are making mm. the diagnosis before the lab values occur. And sometimes there are abnormal lab values, but there's no physician diagnosis. So we, as researchers, really need to know how to um, find context in that data and to subgroup it to find instances where um, you know there is a direct overlap and in cases where there isn't overlap to figure out why and how we can improve data going forward. It's a really exciting time to be in medicine. It is. <laughs> Thanks so much for speaking with me today. Thank you.